Hello and welcome to Sared's Audio Fan Fictions. I'm Sared. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we will be continuing on with Chapter 11 of November's Secret by Lana Berry. Before we get started, just a little reminder. The entirety of this fic will be made available into a single complete audiobook upon the fic's completion. It and other complete works can be found on my website at sardsaudiofanfics.com as well as on my AO3 Archive of Our Own profile page. Just search Sard, S-E-R-D-D. Right, with all that out of the way, here comes another long one, so let's get to it. Happy listening! Chapter 11. Home. This rink was bigger. The lights were brighter. There were more people sitting in the stands, more cameras, more publicity, more everything. As Yuri walked out of the walkway that opened up to the rink, he took a moment to calm himself and see everything through Ren's eyes. Ren wasn't scared. Ren was never scared, not even when he saw the countless faces that looked back at him. There were voices in the air, too loud for him to make out specific words. He saw a camera crew just a few feet to his right. A reporter stood before it with her microphone. Journalists were taking photos of the skaters that were already scattered around the rink, stretching their muscles. Music filtered through the air on the intercoms, drowned out slightly by the commenters reading out a list of names. A camera was flying overhead on a tight wire. There were posters and signs everywhere, with flags of every country competing. In the stands to his left, a group of Japanese tourists held up dozens of Japanese flags and a few posters of him. When they saw him look their way, they screamed and waved their posters. They all wished him luck, and he bowed to them, thanking them with actions when his words could not reach them. There would be millions tuning in, his family a small fraction of them. This was such a big competition. He hadn't competed in something so big before. He hadn't even had the chance to take to the Junior World Championships before he had to retire temporarily. Yuri continued to panic, but that seemed so far away now. Ren was taking control, and he was calm, excited. He laced up his skates and took to the ice to stretch and warm up. There were skaters he hadn't seen before, and as he skated past, he saw the way they looked at him. Merely curious, while some glared as if he was competition. Yuri had never been stared at like that before. He'd never really been competition in anyone's eyes. It made him feel strange. Could he maybe exchange his bronze for something more? Could he take gold or silver away from Chris and Victor? He wasn't sure he could. And yet the thought motivated him. All too soon, the warm-ups finished. Still, Yuri felt calm, collected, cool in a way he had never been before. His eyes caught Victor at the side, already talking to the reporter and the camera, his smile wide and talking animatedly. As Yuri stepped off the ice, replacing the guards onto his blades, He decided to try something. He watched as Victor raised his right hand to his side, flicking his wrist at a throwaway comment. And Yuri mimicked it. The movement felt quick, expressive. Dropping his hand, he watched Victor again. The man rolled his head and raised his left shoulder until they touched, looking a little vulnerable, but still sure of himself. Yuri followed feeling the action draw the attention of some around him. Thinking nothing of it, they continued on. Victor clasped his hands behind his back, opening himself up for the camera to see. Normally, Yuri would cross his arms before his chest, wanting to hide. But this time, he copied the Russian. At first, it felt weird, as if he was bare at the front. But as Ren made it his own, he felt it bring confidence to his form. Hmm, he thought. What else could he learn from the skaters around him? How could he incorporate their little movements into Ren, 
so that the next interview could be wrapped around his little finger. He would need to watch some of the interviews Victor had given to listen to the intonations in his speech and the carefully picked words he gave. There was so much potential, so much more room for Wren to grow. Yuri sometimes wondered what it would be like in a few years, what Wren would be like. How could he expand on his character? How could he help Yuri live? What little personalities could he give Wren? Perhaps in a few years, Wren could become more human than Persona. Maybe the lines would blur and Yuri wouldn't know who he was anymore. Or maybe it would become blurred for the better, where Wren was no longer his own entity, but completely Yuri. His confidence no longer just Wren's. The future was filled with possibilities. And because of Wren, Yuri didn't feel so scared about it anymore. It used to be a looming, dark prospect, with little hope of what was around the corner. While his classmates all had their plans set, their goals and their ambitions, with the confidence they needed to gain it, Yuri always worried that he would be too frightened to chase his dreams. The thoughts of others weighed heavily on him, and anything he ever wanted to be would always be in the middle of attention. It wasn't a good combination. But now he was here, 20, with two medals under his belt and potentially a third by the end of the weekend. And who knew? Now that the years were open to him, who knew what more he could achieve? With that thought in mind, he sat with his coach and watched as the competitions were beginning. There was a string of skaters Yuri didn't know, or some that appeared only slightly familiar from his time watching in his off-season. Some names were new, while others were readying to retire. Others Yuri knew well, names he had seen flash before his screen for years, faces he saw compete against Chris and Victor more than once, never really making the podium or taking their spots from them. Each one, though, regardless of if they knew Yuri or not, greeting him with a polite smile and wished him luck. Yuri replied with the same polite responses, but on the inside, he was happy, almost ecstatic to be here, with them. Warn me before you make any drastic changes to the program, please, Celestino chided playfully, knocking his shoulder against the younger skater. I almost had kittens last time. Yuri rubbed the back of his neck, feeling a little ashamed. During the time, he felt like it was the right thing to do, as he was swept by the current of losing himself. But after he finished, when he had time to think about what the combination jumps had probably done to his coach, he knew it hadn't been the best choice. Just before, he had been attacked, and the bruises bloomed like decaying flowers on his skin. There was a real chance he wouldn't land it and Celestino must have been worried that the sudden choice might have injured him badly, perhaps even permanently. Wren couldn't save Yuri from that. I'm not thinking of changing anything this time around, Yuri promised. You know, Celestino began, lowering his voice and leaning back against the wall. I hear Victor doesn't listen to his coach either. Yakov, poor thing, has quite the trouble handling him. It's good to be rebellious, but don't let Ren incorporate that much rebellion into his personality, okay? The last comment was made with a smirk and a raised eyebrow. Yuri dropped his hands, fiddling with his fingers in his lap. So that's where the trade had come from. Yuri never rebelled against his coaches, taking their word as truth and not wanting to fail on his own. But Ren always wanted to better them pushing until he surprised even himself. He'd wondered where that had come from, especially as he didn't know anyone that was quite like that. But perhaps he did. Perhaps on some level he knew that Victor was more rebellious than he let on. And Wren wanted that. After so many years of being a pushover, Yuri wanted his persona to finally have his own voice, a chance to cry out whenever Yuri Kotsky couldn't. 
Yuri nodded. All rain ran in, he joked. Not that he felt he needed to. Once he had proven that he could do it, Celestino got Yuri to practice combination jumps over and over again in training, then added them not only to his roster, but to his program as well, finding it fit well with the flow. Yuri couldn't wait to add more things to the list that he could do. Perhaps by the time he retired, he would be able to surprise the world, just like Victor did. His phone buzzed in his pocket and he fished it out, seeing a text that brightened up his face, pulling a smile that ached. Currently cocooned in a mound of blankets with popcorn in my lap, hamsters lost in the fold somewhere, and the laptop on streaming the competition. Skate your heart out there, Yuri. Kick those old geezers down a notch. Along with it was an attached picture of Peachy, lost in a dozen blankets, with only his head popping out from the top, and a hand reaching out from the top to take the photo. In his lap was a bowl spilling with endless popcorn, some already fallen onto the blanket, a hamster suspiciously sneaking along his leg and eyeing the bowl. A little tail was peeking out from the seam, while a bulge was hidden underneath the blanket beside the laptop, which was perched on a chair before the bed, showing a list of the skaters ready to perform today. Peachy'd had a beaming smile on his lips and his eyes wide and sparkling. There was already a bit of popcorn stuck in his teeth. Yuri took a moment to appreciate it, overcome with the gratitude towards his best friend. He sent back a thank you, a quick picture of the rink, and then put his phone away. Right, Celestino huffed, shifting himself from the seat. Time to get ready. You're on next. Yuri's heart hammered. Already? His gaze lifted to the rink where he saw a skater he only saw as vaguely familiar was coming to a finish of his program, breathing heavily and his face pouring with sweat. The music above was filtering off slowly, growing softer and softer. But Yuri could only think of how much of an idiot he was. He hadn't been paying attention, barely even registering that it was nearly his turn. This was the world championships, for God's sake, and he hadn't been paying attention. He breathed deeply, following Celestino, and urged Ren to take control. His persona was eager, watching the ice with hungry eyes, even as he felt one of the cameras turn to him to watch him prepare. Ren wanted to be out there, wanted to lose himself, wanted everyone to see just what this meant to him. First Worlds and he wasn't scared. The skater before him stopped in his finishing pose, drinking in the applause and the commenter's words as his chest rose and fell heavily. Flowers were being thrown from the stands, and he bowed deeply to them all. Yuri held on to his coach while he removed his guards, breathing in deeply. Thoughts crossed his mind at an inhuman pace, wondering how he could make this better and better. Yuri was always good at the step sequences, the spins, and bringing the program alive with emotions. Even with Ren helping with jumps now, it still wasn't his strongest element. So he knew he needed to bring more emotion, make it expressive, make it beautiful and effortless until no one could look away. Make it pull emotions from the audience, strong and powerful, and just as Yuri felt when he was little, watching the skaters as he was growing up. He stepped out onto the ice, feeling the difference between this and the Grand Prix immediately. Yes, there were more cameras. The space was bigger. More people to be watching. But not only that. Just like how their voices and cheers were louder, their silence was even more deafening. As he readied his starting position, the crowd died until the only sound was the commentators, reciting his name and how well he had done in the Grand Prix, drawing attention to the mystery of his mask for anyone who hadn't known, and the slicing of his skates on the polished ice. Not even the shuffling of people in their seats, or the lone voice of a talkative person, or the clicks of cameras. Strange, Yuri thought. Once the commentator stopped speaking, he could almost convince himself that he was back in Ice Castle, skating alone. 
The music began, filtering through the rink softly, trickling like water into every ear that could listen. Beginning slowly, he had time to really lose himself before he could make a mistake. He pushed all thoughts away from his mind and felt every little bit of energy flood to his limbs. The first few spins came. He slowly raised his leg up into the air, supported by his hand, and felt the stretch in his muscles, delicious in their familiarity. He basked in the feeling of the wind whistling through his hair, catching between his spread fingers, his mask pressed reassuringly against his face. He concentrated on the sound of the blade against the ice, slipping and sliding, slicing his mask into it. He may never return to this rink, but it would forever remember him. He opened up into a spread eagle, gliding along the side of the rink, facing the crowd. Their expressions flashed before him, all in awe, spurring him on. The time seemed to go on forever until he needed to ready for his first quad. He found his balance easily, never hesitating, and jumped. He flew, and all too soon he was touching the ice again, the landing firm and almost as if he was made for it. As he skated from his jump, he opened his legs until he was gliding on one bent knee and skate. His other leg stretched out behind him. He trailed his hands down his face, lightly touching his neck and chest as he drew all of the eyes to his mask. Watch me, he thought. Look at what I am. What I have become. What I have come from. Watch my growth. Watch me. He knew that the audience would never completely comprehend, never really know what it was to feel like him. He could explain it in interviews, express it through his skating as much as he wanted. But no one really knew. And that wasn't just because no one knew Yuri Kotsky, but only Ren Himura. That was the majority, but the rest was simple. No one could feel things like he could. No one could feel the music pouring into him like he could. No one could know every little note like he did after hours upon hours of studying and dancing to it. No one knew the meeting like him. No one knew the theme like he did. No one could skate like he could. Skaters came closer than the audience ever could. Skaters knew the same routine, a piece of music ingrained into themselves so deeply that the memories would show so vividly every time even a note was played. Their emotions could be immortalized in a single piece of music, forever until their deaths, and felt so deeply that it hurt. But skaters could only understand the feeling, never the programs of others. They saw what was on the outside, understanding that something amazing was happening in the minds of the skaters out on the ice, knowing that the few minutes they had out on the ice was something worthy of forever for them. So, Yuri knew that only he could make his program worthy of himself. It was one of the thousands of reasons his pride crumbled under failure, because he knew his programs were worthy of only the best people that could express them. Each one was specially crafted until it was something so much bigger than a program, but a memory. Ren made him realize how much importance it held inside him. He wanted the world to see the beautiful programs as they were, but he wanted to remember the programs fondly as the years passed by. He wanted to, someday, sit in his old age and remember with a smile of his countless routines, confident that he had skated them to the best of his ability. In the Grand Prix, he realized it suddenly, with a rush of nerves as he stood on the podium. Yuri Kotsky wanted his programs to be the best they ever could be, and Ren Himura had the confidence to make it so. The single thought was heavily embedded inside of him as he skated into the second half of the short program. With more jumps on this side, he readied himself both mentally and physically. He hadn't started to feel the strain yet, a good indication that the training had been worth it, but knew that once he finished his skate, it would be hard on his muscles. He readied himself for a jump, 
gulping quickly but never hesitating. He breathed against the mask just to feel his breath deflected back. When the jump came, he felt a slight strain in his leg, not enough to make himself fall, but the landing was slightly wobbly as his knee attempted to give way. He moved on as if it was nothing, and Ren wanted to take the challenge into the next jump. Yuri stepped back and allowed his personality to fill him with confidence he so craved, overwhelming his desire to curl in on himself at the wobble. But he hadn't fallen, he reminded himself. Not even touched down. Just a wobble. Only a wobble. Ren didn't care. Not even as he skated into the next jump, determined to make this one even better. The last quad was perfect. Landing with such surety that it was as if it were near impossible to land any other way. Overcome with pride, Yuri raised his arm into the air, fist pumping towards the ceiling as the short minutes came to an end. He stopped in his finishing position, breathing so heavily, tears nearly forming at the corners of his eyes. He didn't know why he felt so overwhelmed. Perhaps it was because he had thrown himself into the program, feeling every little movement, allowing every emotion to fill him during it. So vulnerable. Perhaps it was because it was his first Worlds, and this cemented that he was actually a good skater, and that his Grand Prix hadn't been a fluke. Or perhaps it was because with every voice he heard, almost drowned among the applause, he was reminded of how much he had to go through to get here. It hadn't been easy, but he was finally here, and he was doing well, and he was socializing with the greats. Never in all his time growing up did he think he would ever be anywhere close. Always have a plan B, his parents had said. Something to fall back on if the first aspiration didn't work out. They never said it because they expected it to fall, but more for support. Because even Yuri doubted himself. His plan B was quickly becoming his plan A, until Yuko made her suggestion. Now he was here. Every time he thought it, he could never get over it. He would continue to think it until it came to retirement, whenever that came. He waited at the kiss and cry with Celestino, still trying to rein in his own light crying. He tried to hide it from the crowd, but it was hard to when the drops were slipping down to his chin to fall on his chest for everyone to see. His phone, transferred to Celestino's pocket, buzzed against his thigh again and again, and he wondered if it was his mother or Peachit, both having seen his tears on the television. When his score came, he sobbed louder. His score was high, beating his own personal best by quite a few points. His hands shook, desperate to clutch the sides of his face and pinch himself from his dream, but unable to. He ran them through his hair. Murmurs bubbled from his throat as he stared at the score, aware of Celestino shouting something beside him and throwing his arms around Yuri. The audience were cheering loudly. The commentators were saying something. Yuri really wanted to pay more attention, but he couldn't. He knew he had the free skate tomorrow to still do, but he wasn't able to stop himself from imagining himself on that podium again, wherever it was, standing with his two friends again, the medal gleaming. Chris and Victor had yet to go, and though Yuri's score was at the top for the moment, he knew that it wouldn't be for long. He was filled with happiness. Unable to believe that this season had been so fantastic, program after program of only the smallest mistakes. The phone buzzed against his leg continuously as message after message was coming through. He wanted to scream out his emotions, to jump up and cheer with them all. But his muscles were not listening. He sat still, processing the words and the numbers. All too soon, they needed to move from the kissing cry, and they returned to the bench, but was stopped by a reporter as they passed. The microphone was shoved into his face, almost slamming into his mask in the eagerness of the reporter. That was a truly emotive experience, Ren, he said. What do you think about when you're out there performing? The question brought Ren back to the present with a jolt. He quickly looked at Celestino, the man looking uncomfortable, leaving Ren to take a sudden interview. 
The man was watching the way Yuri moved, waiting for a cue of if Yuri wanted to be taken away. Yuri gently shook his head and turned back to the reporter, feeling a little nervous but allowing his persona to take that away. What do I think about? He repeated the question, rolling the words on his tongue. I guess I don't really think about anything. I feel it. If I think too much, I become too aware of what I'm doing, and I make more mistakes. If I feel it, just letting my body move the way we practiced, it works out much better. The reporter nodded, looking as if the answer didn't mean as much as the actual interview did. Right. After your podium finish in the Grand Prix, many are wondering if you can repeat your achievement. What do you think? Yuri stretched his arms behind his back, intertwining his fingers together. Nothing is a surety, he answered. I would love to be on the podium again. Maybe this time higher? But there is really good competition this year, and any one of them could make it. The reporter shrugged his shoulders. It's a surety that Viktor Nikivarov will reach gold, though. Yuri tilted his head to the side. No, it's not. I promise you, I will take it from him one day. Yuri Kotsky wanted to scream at that, but Renhimura was ready to immortalize the promise on television for all to witness. Sometimes, Yuri wondered why he let his persona have free reign when it brought more embarrassment. The reporter laughed, looking as if he didn't believe Yuri. Not one bit. <laughs> okay. After this season, what are your plans? To prepare for the next season, most likely. I don't intend to take any more seasons off from now until retirement, so you'll be able to harass me as often as you like. He gave a chuckle, spurred on by the unsure giggle from the reporter. He lowered his tone enough for there to be a slight threat there, for everyone to remember what had happened before the Grand Prix. He wasn't sure what had happened to the journalist that had attacked him, only knew enough that he had been fired, humiliated, and was gone now. Yuri was sure that whatever he was going through now, the assault would forever be tied to him. Do you already have any programs in mind for next year? No, I won't concentrate on those until the end of this season. And any thoughts about what the theme for next season might be? Or will you concentrate on that later, too? I've had some ideas during this season, but nothing concrete. There had been many themes that had risen in his time, branches from his theme this year of return. There had been things like confidence, love, and some others, but he hadn't talked it over with Celestino yet and certainly wasn't prepared until the end of the season. Many are wondering if you will ever take the mask off, some bets online gathering thousands. Can we get any confirmation of if you'll reveal your identity before retirement? Yuri should have known that a question like that would appear. No reporter approached him with the intention of a simple interview. Never. He gave a soft chuckle and answered, It's not something I'm thinking about, really. I'll see how things go, and perhaps there will be something to look forward to in my last season. But that's quite a few years off, hopefully. The reporter's eyes shone, finally interested. And if you decide not to show? Then no one finds out. Before he could say more, Celestino butted in, announcing that there was something they needed to do and pulled Yuri away from the cameras. Tell Ren to rein it in. Rain what in? You were snapping at him, and he saw that and was egging you on. He wanted you to slip and let something go. Yuri took a deep breath. He knew that he was always conscious of everything he said, replaying it in his mind to make sure it wasn't something wrong before he found the courage to say it. But Ren didn't care, an aspect that sometimes Yuri wished he had. He'd need to be careful of that trait, give Ren time to think about things before he said them. Otherwise, Celestino was right. He might say something one day that he couldn't take back. Celestino guided them back to where their things were and sat on the bench overlooking the rink. The man on it now was unfamiliar to Yuri, dancing with everything he had, but slipped out of a jump and touched down. 
He rose quickly and continued, but Yuri saw the way he grit his teeth and how the nerves racked his body. For a moment, he saw himself out on the ice. The way the man thought too much about his program and made little mistakes he shouldn't have. His heart reached out for the man, knowing just how hard it was to be scared. Victor's next, Celestino said. And after him? Chris. Then it's the free skate tomorrow. Yuri buzzed with excitement, eager to see the others. He wondered how they were feeling after seeing his program. What had they felt? Did they see him as a real threat now? Or did they still think he would fall to third place behind them? Had they felt anything at all watching it? He impatiently looked around, trying to spot the two familiar figures somewhere in the crowd of skaters. He spotted them easily. Chris was to his right, almost on the other side of the rink, watching the skater on the ice with rapt attention. He had one hand on his hip, the other touching his lips, his eyes following the skater with a critical eye. He spoke quickly with his coach about something, nodding and shaking his head, his gaze never leaving. Victor was on his left, speaking to who Yuri assumed was his coach, too, but not looking at the rink. He glanced occasionally, but he also seemed to be having a deeper conversation with his coach. Victor seemed calm, going so far as to be almost teasing. But the older man was yelling, throwing his arms around the place and trying to step into Victor's personal space, pushing their faces close together. As if ignoring him, Victor turned away from his coach and watched as the skater came to an end, throwing his arms up in a finishing pose and looked as if he just wanted to be off the ice and hiding somewhere. Victor moved to go next, taking the guards from his skates. There was something that Yuri noticed as he watched Victor. Everyone he had watched, Yuri always recognized the same nerves racking their bodies as they stepped onto the ice. He watched them take a deep breath, steadying themselves, mentally reassuring that they had done this many times before and that this was no different. But Victor didn't. Victor stepped out as if there was nothing to be nervous about, eager to leave the ringside and be on the other side of the barrier. As Victor stood ready, his arms holding himself close, one leg bent before the other, Yuri wondered what that meant. Victor had said as much that the ice was his refuge, just as Yuri felt. But it was now that he was realizing just what the Russian intended. The ice was where he could be himself, and even in the middle of attention he could still pretend he was alone. It was where the laws of society fell away for just a few minutes, where any other thoughts could be pushed away for a shorter time. Victor behaved as if stepping off of the ice was the thing to be nervous about. The rink faded into silence as Victor stood, and as his music began to flow, a soft lull strumming to life, he looked up to the ceiling. For just a beat, he did nothing, and then skated into it, catching the breaths of everyone watching with how graceful he was immediately. Yuri found himself leaning forwards to watch, feeling his heart beating every time Victor reached out to someone who wasn't there. There really was something different about watching Victor in the flesh performing to watching on the television. There was something in the way Victor moved, something that Yuri knew he would never be able to incorporate into Ren, that demanded attention and held it so easily. Yuri gripped the shirt before his chest, his pulse hammering, everything turning blurry as he saw the emotion in Victor's performance. It was evident in every glance, every twist of his head, every step he took, that he felt the program just as much as Yuri did. But there was a split second, just a quick flash, of Victor's face morphing from its soft sadness into something more determined more aggressive, before he was able to school it. Yuri had only a second to think about it before Victor did something that surprised them all. The entrance into the jump was a familiar but rare one, and as he stepped into it, the crowd held their breath. 
Yuri leapt forwards, holding the barrier, watching as Victor soared through the air and landed it perfectly. Just a hint of a grin before he was sucked into the emotion again. But the crowd was stunned into silence. Yuri even more so, unable to process. The world knew Victor could do a quad flip. It had been added to his roster many years ago, and yet Victor didn't use it much. No one understanding why when it gained him so many points. It had been many seasons since, and here it was. Here it was in all of its glory. And Victor had counted it like it meant nothing. Yuri rushed back to his chair, feeling a question bubbling from his chest before he could stop it. Can you teach me how to do that? Celestino looked taken aback, glancing from the program finishing to Yuri, his eyebrows knitting together. I... Yuri turned back, seeing Victor stop in his finishing pose, raising his gaze to look up, breathing heavily. For the first time, the commentator was almost at a loss for words. Yuri was sure the score was going to be high, and the judges were probably excited, rushing to finish, eagerness pouring from them. And a high score it was. Victor and his coach waited at the kiss and cry, their eyes trained on the screen before them as it was announced. Victor went shooting up to the top, above Yuri's name, as he always did. It only encouraged Yuri to think of how he could better it, how he could push the legend down. The name on top of his would one day be below, placed on the podium as such, with the gold glittering on Yuri's chest. He wanted to rush to the Russian and ask how he had done it. Why now? Why the short program instead of the free skate? He had so many questions. But he watched as Victor, holding a bouquet of bright flowers, was interrogated by the same reporter that had stopped Yuri. He seemed much more eager with the older man. When Chris took to the ice, the crowd were still buzzing from Victor's program. It took the commentator to hush them all before they began to die down. The clear favorite was known, and therefore the winner was already decided. Everyone believed that Victor would take another title for another consecutive year and season, and the only real race now was who would get second. Chris seemed to see that too, because he took to the ice with determination, his eyes narrowed, his movements slightly rigid. For just a moment, Yuri wondered if he was going to be all right, if the nerves were going to get the best of him. But Chris proved him wrong. Yuri wasn't the only one who could lose himself, and Chris and Victor had spent quite a few years more practicing and competing than Yuri. They could compose themselves easily, perform despite their feelings beforehand, like the professionals that Yuri wasn't. Chris's step sequence was stunning, his hands trailing over his form as if he couldn't keep his hands to himself. As he glided on the edge of the rink, gathering speed to attempt his first jump, he blew a few kisses to the group at the front of the audience. All women who had held up cutouts of his face and Swiss flags, screams tore through the air. The music combined with his moves were sultry, catered to an audience that Chris knew well, encouraged by the We love yous! that were thrown at him every time he skated past. Sex on legs, as many on the internet liked to call him, following him on social media that had folders upon folders of suggestive photos, coming out of the pool or the shower or changing against a backdrop of a hotel window. There was little that was actually known about the skater, though. He didn't often speak about his past, only where his skating was concerned. And any questions about relationships, current or past, were thrown away with a polite counter. Many people tried, but Yuri couldn't blame him. Not when his whole persona was based on mystery and avoiding questions. Chris eased into the ending pose, the music hitting a sudden crescendo, Chris jolting with it. A hard thing to do, stopping so suddenly, and could upset balance. But Chris made it look so easy, throwing a seductive wink over his shoulder towards the commentator and judges. And when his scores came in, they shot above Yuri's. 
His name, blinking under Victor's and above Wren's, seemed at home there. The scores were not very far apart, still for the chance of change tomorrow. Though both Chris and Yuri would need to work very hard to be able to steal the gold from Victor. As the audience were beginning to file out, Yuri rushed to find Victor, compelled to see the other skater without really knowing why. He found Victor speaking to a reporter along the hall towards the bathrooms. He was animated in his answers, throwing his arms around and nodding his head until his hair was gently shaken from its gel. The reporter was enamored with him, taking his words in, unable to look away from the older man's expressions. Yuri was about to turn around, embarrassed and not wanting to interrupt them, but before he was able to get away, Victor called out to him. Dren! he shouted. He quickly said something to the reporter before he rushed past the distance between them. He threw an arm around the shorter one's shoulders and drew him closer. His face was open, bright, and vulnerable as he looked down at Yuri. Your short program was magical! Yuri blushed, finding it hard to look at Victor's face. The openness always surprised him, a reminder that he himself couldn't be like that. Thank you. It was like you were making music with your body. Yuri grinned and tried to stop his need to fiddle with his fingers out of discomfort. It was as he thought. Only other skaters could know how much someone could feel their music while they performed it. Only other skaters that could see the endless hours amount into only a few minutes. But while Yuri had known that other skaters would notice, he hadn't expected such a reaction from Victor himself, who he knew had more time than to be watching Yuri's skate and assessing it in detail. He knew he was good, and even if he doubted himself, the world told him otherwise as did his friends, his coach, and the results on the board. But even then, he knew he was nothing compared to the Russian legend, and having Victor say something so lovely made Yuri crave more. He quickly threw the thought away, as he didn't want to keep demanding more when he should have been content with what he had. Thank you, he repeated trying to push everything he was feeling into only the two words. Quickly catching himself, he looked up into Victor's face and said, And your performance was breathtaking again. And that quad flip? I, I don't even know what to say. You really surprised everyone. Victor's expression did something strange then. A mix of his mask and something genuine, until it looked slightly painful as if there were two opposing feelings battling themselves out in his mind. Did you not like it? Yuri found himself asking. He turned to look Victor full on, a little worried when Victor took a step back and looked elsewhere. Did something go wrong? No, no, Victor assured. It was what I planned. Why did you do it? Yuri knew he had hit something with the question when Victor flinched. Barely visible, but it shook his form. To surprise the crowd. It's what I'm known for, no? His voice didn't hold the warmth Yuri had become so familiar with. He didn't know where the action came from, but decided to blame Wren when he took a deep breath and stepped forwards, grabbing fistfuls of the front of Victor's costume and pulled him closer until Victor had no choice but to look at Yuri. When Victor's eyes widened, unable to look away, Yuri knew what he was seeing. This close, it was hard not to see into the eye holes of the mask, to see just a little bit of his dull brown eyes, even under the mask's shadows. Besides his mouth, it was the most the other man had ever seen. Yuri should have pushed him away when he noticed the way Victor was staring. He had a mask for a reason not wanting people to see anything, and though his mouth was fine, needed, in fact, to eat, and he wasn't too worried about people seeing that, his eyes were a different story. His eyes held all of his emotions, bare and open for his vulnerability. The eyes were the window to the soul. 
Beyond that, Yuri hated his eyes. They were too big for a boy's, and the color was uninteresting. Dull, common, and did nothing for his face. They weren't like Victor's, whose eyes could be stared into for hours. Forever. But as he stared back at Victor, he found he didn't mind it. Victor had proven himself this morning, not even trying to look at Yuri in the mirror in his most vulnerable moment. He could have looked, just a simple glance upwards, and seen everything. He could have said it was an accident, a lapse into temptation for just a second. That was all it took. But as soon as he grasped this situation, not only did he turn around, but suggested he could leave to make Yuri more comfortable. So, while Ren knew that Victor wouldn't be able to do much with knowing his eye color anyway, Yuri knew that he had proved himself to see even this little bit, this most vulnerable part of himself. Because he knew Victor was showing something of just as much importance to him right now. You don't have to do something just because people expect it of you! Yuri shouted, pushing Victor until he was pushed up against the wall. He wasn't sure where the feeling was coming from, but again blamed it on Ren. Under his palms, Yuri could feel the man's heart beating against his chest, hammering harder and harder with each second. Sure that Victor wasn't too shocked, he continued. Do it for you, not for them. If you wanted to do the jump, then that's for you not because you wanted to surprise the audience. Victor looked a little too surprised for words, his mouth opening and closing, still looking into Yuri's eyes as if it was the only thing he could see. Don't be conscious of them. Do all of this for you, Yuri repeated, hoping the words were being ingrained into the other skater. Because that was all he wanted to see, Victor enjoying the sport he did. Yuri loved skating, finding it to be where he could escape. And he wanted Victor, the man he looked up to, to feel the same way. He didn't know what it was like to be on top, to be admired so and chased by interviews and fans continuously. But he could imagine the pressure. Yuri's own sponsors were kind people. But he had heard some horror stories about Victor's people who held the strong belief that if they weren't backing the champion, then their money was wasted. Victor must have been pressured constantly to be the best and to be the star. To remain in the media, to always be interesting, he had to surprise people. Yuri thought how lonely that must have been. Many saw him as an unbeatable force, giving up nearly as soon as they were placed in the same competition as him, aiming for silver instead of gold. And without the competition, continuously receiving the gold time and time again, Victor must have been losing some of his love for it, because Yuri knew he would have. He had always had to fight for what he wanted, and sometimes it was too tiring to continue. But he knew that it must have been the same for someone who got it easily, without competition. You don't need to surprise people, Yuri said, trying to find the words in the jumble of his mind. You don't always need to be perfect. Yuri knew he had said the right thing when Victor inhaled deeply, nearly a gasp at the words, his body tensing. He was getting close to the problem, he felt. You don't always need to be perfect. You can be yourself, and there's nothing wrong with that. And do you believe in those words? Victor asked carefully, raising his hands to circle Yuri's wrists. Do you think there's nothing wrong with being yourself? His voice was quiet, assuring, not at all accusing. But it felt like it. Yuri flinched a little wondering how the question had been turned on him. This isn't about me. It's about you, he pushed. I know that the pressure of being the star must get to you, and knowing that a lot of people that admire you admire the champion. But you can be yourself completely, 
and no one would admire you any less. I definitely wouldn't admire you any less. He didn't have time to think about how embarrassing the statement was, Ren pushing down the flailing Yuri. Don't create, perform, or change a program just because you need to stay relevant or to keep surprising a crowd that you think are growing bored. Do it because you love it, because you want to make yourself proud, because you want to show the world just how far you've come. Throw all your emotions into the routine, because I guarantee that's going to be what catches the audience. Victor gave a small smile, soft and barely there, but Yuri was caught with how genuine it was. It lit up the tension, a brightness that could be seen in any darkness, something so beautiful that not even a photo could catch it. Is that what you do? Yuri nodded. Yes. Victor took a deep breath, calming whatever turmoil that there had been inside of him. Yuri, seeing the way his shoulders slumped as the tension left him, understood that he had only scratched the surface of whatever problem Victor had been plagued with for years, longer than even Yuri had been competing. But it was a start. The Russian man only needed the first kick, an assurance from perhaps another skater, for him to take a hold of it and decide to tackle it. Yuri knew, because he needed the same push, often finding it in his own friends and family. He could never get over things himself, and he suspected Victor was the same. Not wanting to leave the conversation on such a serious tone, Yuri dropped his hands, surprised that Victor's grip on his wrist followed, and said, You don't have to worry about the pressure of being on top for long, though. Victor raised an eyebrow. Oh? How so? Because I'll be taking it from you. The words caught the man by surprise until they clicked, and Victor threw his head back, a loud chuckle bubbling from his chest. Yuri's heart skipped a beat at the sound. He stepped back, hearing his name called from around the corner. People were beginning to gather their things, ready to settle in their hotel rooms after a long and trying day. Yuri couldn't blame them. His knees were weak, and he was ready to collapse at any moment. He wanted to rest in his hotel, order something with Celestino, make calls with his family and friends, and sleep for hours upon hours. He stepped away from Victor, feeling a loss when their skin-on-skin -skin contact was gone, and said, I hope I wasn't too personal, he rushed as an apology, and I hope you feel better. It's just that when people who admire you see you looking down, we can't help but want to coddle you a little. He turned away before he could shame himself further, all the while going through the conversation in his mind and flinching at everything he had said, and feeling Victor's gaze on his back, all the way until he turned the corner. Celestino greeted him there, Yuri's phone in his hands. He made a comment about the influx of texts and calls Yuri had been receiving from all sorts of people, and ushered him towards the exit. As they entered the taxi, Celestino made plans of how they were going to celebrate such a fantastic short program. Yuri found he couldn't wait until tomorrow. And not just because he felt like he could skate again with the same intensity. He wanted to see if Victor had taken his words to heart. And if so, how he was going to skate differently. It was going to be a long night, he knew already and whatever dreams he had were going to be filled with skating and, perhaps, a certain Russian skater. "'It's going to be fine,' Celestino said from where he sat on the bench. His head turned side to side slowly as he watched Yuri pace before him, the worry clearly edged on his face. "'It's the last bit of the World Championships now. Just the free skate to go.' Yuri paused in his pacing, looking down at his coach as if he'd forgotten everything. Catching up quickly, Yuri shook his head. I'm not worried about my free skate. As the words left his lips and continued his pacing, he found that they rang true. 
It was strange, feeling so completely different from how he had started off yesterday. But he knew he could do the free skate. Wren convinced him that they had practiced it over and over again, perhaps even too many times. But they could do it in their sleep if they wanted to. No, Yuri's worries settled a little deeper. He hadn't seen Victor this morning yet, and he worried what the man thought after their talk the day before. He hoped his words hadn't been taken the wrong way, or he became too personal. He hoped he hadn't crossed some line that he had no business crossing over. Viktor Nikivrov was a world champion, more than once. Of course he knew what he was doing, and of course he didn't need advice from Yuri, who had only won a bronze so far in his senior career. If anyone was going to need advice, it was Yuri. Would this tinge their budding friendship? Yuri hoped not. The thought of the older man hating him burned something foul in his mouth. His heart hammered against his ribcage, frightening him. But Victor had seemed fine with it before, right? But he had a whole night to think about it. What if he thought in those hours that what Yuri had said was out of line? Or, worst of all, what if the words did hit home and Victor decided he didn't want to skate with these feelings he had? What if they got a notice right now that he had pulled from the competition? Or if he was ill? Or came out and flunked his routine? Yuri stopped and gripped the sides of his head, knowing that letting his anxiety run its course was the best option. Wren, though less calm, was worrying about why the Russian hadn't turned up yet and so close to when the first competitor was going to take the ice. Then what are you worried about? Celestino asked, but noticed the way that Yuri's head snapped up every time someone walked down the walkway from the doors. I'm sure he's fine. Probably just caught up by fans and paparazzi outside. Yeah, Yuri agreed, allowing himself to think about that for a moment. He was world champion. It's very logical. Everyone would want to know what he was thinking before the competition, and it would be one of the easiest times to grab him. As the commentator announced that those warming up on the ice should step off, Victor finally entered the rink. Yuri's eyes immediately fell on him, observant in the way that Victor looked tired. Not too much, but he yawned and rubbed at his eyes. Yuri's worry increased, wondering if he hadn't been able to get any sleep because of him. Maybe he should have waited until the end of the competition to say anything. He shouldn't have impulsively ordered the man as if he had any right to. He should have stayed quiet and... But his worries were for nothing. When the Russian saw Yuri... His grin was anything but fake. Bright and wide, reaching his eyes until his sparkling eyes could barely be seen. He raised a hand high above him and waved at the dumbstruck Japanese boy. Thinking it impolite not to, Yuri waved back, be it a little more subdued, and wasn't able to completely come back to himself until Victor turned away after being called by his coach. They walked off to sit on one side of the benches around the rink. See, he's fine, Celestino assured. Yeah, Yuri repeated. He quickly sat down on the bench beside Celestino when his coach ushered him over. You just need to concentrate on your own program. How were you feeling? All right, Yuri replied. His eyes kept flickering to Victor every so often his worry now burning into something like curiosity. He barely had any attention for the competition, not even as the first skater took to the ice. Are you really feeling all right? Yuri turned to his coach. Yeah, he said. Yeah, I'm actually quite calm. Wren was covering him, engulfing him in a tight embrace, a familiar confidence that he wore like a shield. Now that he knew what to expect of this much larger competition, he found it didn't scare even Yuri nearly as much as it had the day before. Celestino gave him a big smile and clapped a hand onto his shoulder. Good. We have plenty of time to go over anything you feel worried about, though. Your third from last, Chris to go after you, and Victor to go last. And then, your first world championships is over. 
If anything, it seemed to be Celestino that was getting worried. After a deep breath, he asked, Is there anything you're not confident about? Yuri took a moment to really roll the question around in his head. Sure now, he shook his head. No, I'm really okay with everything. After all the hours we've spent on it, it's the last time I get to perform it to my very best. The thought struck something inside of him. This program had been worked from scratch, with hours of endless effort on both their parts to complete it. He forgot what this felt like after four years off. He was finally laying the program to rest. But more than that, this was going to be the last competition of his first senior season, his senior debut. If that didn't give him the desire to perfect it, he didn't know what would. That's the spirit. As the competition kicked off, Yuri sat back against the wall watching as the other skaters danced their hearts out. Yuri, though, wasn't paying too much attention, seeing their names, their colors flash across the rink, and then he would think about everything else that weighed on his mind. Chris was to his right, doing stretches against the wall. Victor was to his left, sitting quietly with his coach and analyzing the skaters before them. Yuri found that there was an odd tension in the air, but wasn't sure if it was self-inflicted or if it settled over everyone. The cameras were whirling around, journalists snapping photos, the audience screaming their praise, the world watching. It was odd how quickly Yuri had come to think of this as normal. All too soon, it was his turn. His coach wished him luck, but Yuri found the words hard to listen to. Despite how calm he was, he was back in his bubble, immersed in himself, thinking of only what was to come. He stepped out onto the ice, only dimly aware of his name on the lips of the commentator and the signs of the audience. He stood in the middle of the rink, feeling more than seeing the lights dim and the music begin. It started quickly, pushing him into a passionate dance right off the bat. He breathed deeply took everything in, allowing his body to skate to the same program it remembered so easily. Breathe here, it thought. Step there, spin, jump, cater to the crowd. Give it everything. And Yuri was. He was giving it everything. Ren loved the dull sound of the audience cheering and the ice scraping under his trained feet. As he jumped into a flying sit-spin, one arm raised, he caught the glimpses of those watching. Colors melting tightly together, a slur of lines, and yet oddly individual. He could almost see each audience member reacting to him, could see the commentator and the judges at their tables. But most of all, he saw the other skaters. Chris was leaning against the barrier on the far side. A skater Yuri recognized from their pub visit was sitting at the kiss and cry, awaiting his time to move. A few others were cooling down, stretching their tired muscles. Victor was like a homing beacon against them all, though. His sparkling costume nowhere near as radiant as him. Yuri saw him leaning on the bench, almost falling off of the front. He was smiling, mouth open wide, unable to take his eyes off of Yuri. Yuri Kotsky was glad to see that Victor didn't hate him for the things he had said, while Ren Himura wanted to prove to the other man that his words were more than just a little bit of advice. Ren wanted to show him that he stood by his own words. Yuri never got to surprise the audience like Victor did. His mask often surprised them the first time, but that was it. Once they got used to it, Yuri had nothing left to wow them with. But his career wasn't based off of it, and therefore he didn't feel the pressure. Victor did. Yuri wondered how Victor would think if he tried to take his signature move, the quad flip, and use it for his program, right here, in front of the audience. Surprise them all and prove to Victor that you could always do the opposite of the thing they expected of you. 
The thought thrilled him. And as he entered a quad toe loop, he did contemplate it. But reality was a harsh thing, and he knew that he'd never even tried the jump before. He'd fall. No doubt about it. And he knew he couldn't give up his first world championship just for it. Putting the thought at the back of his mind, with the intent to surprise Victor with it one day, he opened himself up into the second half of his program. As the music strummed a little slower, he glided along the edge, open to the crowd and basking in their attention. It was times like these that he loved skating. As he glided, feeling the light strain of his muscles, the wind whistling around him. The music picked up again, and he turned into a triple toe loop, spun into a combination spin, and threw himself into his most complicated step sequence of his short career. There were still some years left, he thought, and he knew he could up the complication until it was perfect. His heart was warm in his chest, thumping along with the music, his breathing coming out labored as the beads of sweat rolled down his skin. His costume, now like a second skin, shone under the lights, catching the eyes of anyone looking. At the peak of his second half, as he skated into his next quad-loop, triple-toe-loop combination, he poured everything he was feeling into the action. He landed safely, feeling the burn of his muscles and lungs, and as the beat thumped high, he clutched at the front of his mask with both hands as if to hide crying, and skated with the move frozen for a little. He heard the audience hush as if they were feeling everything he was giving them. Encouraged, he rose once again, allowing his body to go a little limp, the skating a little labored, as if everything he felt was weighing him down. When he had their full attention, he turned that sadness into determination. Making his moves quicker, his spin sharper, his last jump a quad saukau harsher. The move made him wobble a little, but only slightly. He already knew he had them in the palm of his hand. Everything he wanted to throw at them, they were eating up. Everything he wanted them to feel, he knew they were feeling intensely. But his thoughts were only on one person. Watch me, he whispered under his mask, and see that you can do the same thing and still have the audience love you. He opened his arms up into his finishing pose, opened for the crowd and the cameras, his chest rising and falling tightly. He barely registered the crowd, his eyes caught by Victor, who sat with an awestruck expression. As a bouquet of flowers landed beside him, he bent to pick it up and sniffed. They were a little overpowering especially after smelling nothing but the ice and the chemicals used to clean it for hours on end. But he held them close still, finding comfort in their color. He followed his coach's beckon off of the ice, placed the guards on his skates, and went to sit at the kiss and cry. The longest moment of his life would always be the wait for the scores between the performance and the moment they flashed on screen. In that time, his thoughts would fill with doubt. He had been thinking too much during the routine. What if he missed something? Or what if it wasn't as good as he thought it had been? But the numbers flashed before him on screen. He hadn't beaten his own personal best this time. But it had been close. Close enough for the score to be very high and take him to the top of the board. With only two more skaters to go, a podium finish was guaranteed again. This time, Yuri caught it quickly and hugged the flowers tightly to his chest, feeling the tears already leaking at the corner of his eyes. He doubted he would ever grow tired of it, even if the rest of his career was a wash of bronze and nothing else. Before he really had a chance to think about it, though, Chris was stepping onto the ice, there was an odd expression on his face, a little more reserved than he usually held. The music strummed and the lights dimmed again. 
Yuri would always think that the program was hardly given justice in the little fragments he saw in practice. It always surprised him how much emotion Chris could evoke in a piece. With every eye watching him, he trailed his hands over his body, his eyes closed and his mouth slightly open. His costume, dark with red glitter, drew the eye. But he was the thing that kept their attentions. He knew exactly how to attract their gaze, how to keep it, and how to make them hungry for more. Because while some took the majority of their career to come up with their theme and perfect it, Chris knew early on what was unique to him. There weren't many figure skaters that could create programs on sexuality and be able to do it in more than one season, or be able to come back year after year with the same theme but holding completely different emotions. Despite some delving into modeling careers, only Chris could actually look like the act of skating itself was sexual. Yuri had to admit that at first it had seemed intimidating, and though he had wanted to meet Chris, was worried that the man himself was the typical cliched sexual predator. Instead, Yuri had found someone who knew how he was viewed, but was so much more than that. All he had done was care for Yuri, support him, took him under his wing, and Yuri would forever be grateful for that. It was why he found himself encouraging the other man, jumping up when he saw that Chris had landed with a wobble, bigger than Yuri's own. Nothing to shake the man, and he didn't touch the ice. But it changed his rhythm, and he was not able to achieve the triple combination. As he glided past, Yuri saw the grimace on his face. He knew that Chris wasn't happy about it, and as he skated into his final pose, he was gritting his teeth, allowing the world to see the frustration in his expression. Yuri wanted nothing more than to assure him, giving him a little nod that Chris gave a small smile at as they walked past. Chris went to wait at the kiss and cry, and the whole world held its breath. A mix of cheers and sighs exploding when Chris's name fell beneath Yuri's. In that moment, Yuri wasn't sure what to feel. The margin was enough that, even had Chris landed the jump, Yuri would have still come ahead. And yet he couldn't help but feel a little guilty at taking Chris's silver streak. But silver. Silver. He was one more away from gold between two greats in his first world championships. Yuri felt as if he was on top of the world, and the pressure here was far more than he expected it to be. The crowd hushed as Victor stood in place. Yuri found himself standing close to the barrier, unable to stop himself, wanting to be closer as he watched. Victor looked as he always did. His expression schooled into a melancholy feature. Perhaps Yuri had been thinking too much. Maybe his words, something that had seemed so big in his mind, was nothing to Victor. He'd practiced this enough, been in multiple competitions, and knew what worked for him. Perhaps he liked the self-inflicted pressure. Perhaps he thrived in it. The music filtered softly through the air and Victor floated into his first step sequence, his body moving like water, reaching out to the crowd as if they were everything he ever asked for. He spun his body, one arm raised high, his figure flashing brightly in the middle of the rink. Graceful, practiced, and everything that anyone ever aspired to be. It took until his first jump for Yuri to notice that something was different. Victor readied for it, breaking character slightly to look where he was, something he rarely did. Victor always seemed so sure of everything he was doing, never needing to do something so unprofessional as make sure he was in the right place. And when he jumped, Yuri was awestruck. The jump was the same as Victor always did. Perfect, and landed just as perfectly. But it was his expression that caught Yuri's eyes. 
Yuri had seen Victor jump this routine several times, and each time he had seen the man with the same schooled expression, the same character set in his features. This time, he jumped with a beaming smile. Yuri felt his heart give a lurch inside his chest. Victor never smiled during a jump, not unless it was programmed into his routine. He was a professional, and the jumps he did always seemed so effortless. But now it seemed as if the jump itself was bringing him joy, taking time to really appreciate the act, as if he was back to being a young skater at the beginning of his career again. The commentators were roaring about it, their words not letting up as they noticed Victor's expression hold the smile as he skated. His movements from then were more emotive, less calculating. He even laughed as he threw himself into another quad flip, but this time there was an obvious difference. Yuri could see that to Victor, the world was melting away before him. This program was his, only for him, open and honest, and it was a privilege for the audience to glimpse it. Sometimes, Yuri knew that the pressure could overtake the feeling of freedom on the ice. It was easy to forget what it felt like to be there, to be dancing on the ice, just for you. It was easy to forget the charm that brought you into the sport at the start. Yuri never forgot. But that was because of how much he had lost along the way already. It reminded him to think of what he did have. But for people at the top of the game, such as Victor... He knew it could be easy to lose touch. The love was pushed aside for sponsors, catering to the audience, to keep your coach happy, to make sure the media never tore you apart. What was a love quickly became a job. But Yuri was watching his words hit home before him. As Victor skated as if it was the last program he was ever going to skate, he saw the way the Russian felt the music taking each beat in stride, feeling everything that passed through the air. And as Victor skated to the end, his finishing pose curling in on himself, Yuri knew that silver was the highest he would be getting today. The audience erupted into a standing ovation, their cheers and applause thumping through the air. Countless flowers, tied in a bouquet or single, were thrown until only parts of the ice were visible anymore. Toys and posters settled all over those, until it was hard for Victor to skate off the ice at all. There was a healthy flush on the skin of his cheeks, his hair lightly tousled. He was grinning. The cameras were going wild, clicking every second that they could catch. They probably had never seen an expression like it on the man's face before. Yuri didn't need to look at the board to know where he was. Celestino hugged him closer, his words nearly a shout as they were pressed into the side of his mask. A silver run! You did it! Yuri could feel tears lightly touching the skin of his neck, and the thought of his coach crying set him rolling, too. He felt the tears leaking down his skin before he even knew they were there, and the smile under his mask ached his cheeks. He gripped Celestino closer, unable to form words, only knowing that, yes, this was better than bronze. This was unbelievable. <laughs> this was beautiful. As they stepped onto their podiums, Yuri finding himself one higher than he had a few months back and on the other side of Victor, the world watched on. He cast a quick, worrying glance towards Chris, who seemed to have gotten over his frustration and mouthed a congratulations at him. You need to be careful, Victor, Chris whispered so that only they could hear. Ren is going to be going for gold next. Yuri bent low as the medal was placed around his neck, seemingly heavier than he remembered, but shining even more brightly. Chris's bronze sparkled as the cameraman took a photo. As Victor bent to receive his gold, he caught Yuri's eye. I look forward to next season, he told Yuri. 
It's been a while since I've been the one looking up. As Yuri stared, he noticed three things. First, the light behind Victor fell perfectly, like a halo around his form, making his hair sparkle and his gold shine brighter than anything Yuri had ever seen. It smoothed his skin, softening his expression, and made it so that his eyes were one of the only things he could see in detail. Second, while the crowd cheered and the cameraman ushered them to look forward, Yuri could only hear Victor, could only hear his breathing, his words, his heart. Third, and most of all, Yuri could feel the way his own heart stopped and hammered at the same time, locked in his throat, pausing his breathing. His knees were buckling, almost giving way under his weight. His blood was pumping loudly in his veins. And the realization crashed down on him so suddenly that he didn't know what to do. But the thing he always did. Be scared. Because he knew what was happening. And he had warned himself, warned Yuri and Ren both against it. And yet here it was. Yuri had admired Victor for a long time. It was impossible not to. The man was brilliant, always something that he wanted to be. He was always beautiful, and as Yuri got to know him, he knew how true that was. There was so much more to Victor than the world knew, and he had been nothing but kind, supportive, and encouraging to Yuri never giving in to temptation when Yuri almost revealed himself. Victor was so much better than he had ever expected. Yuri had admired Victor for a very long time, for nearly as long as he could remember. But he had only knowingly loved the man for a few seconds. Unknowingly, it might have been much longer than that. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. Especially because it was another really long one. <laughs> you may be able to expect, I think, in the following chapters, that they are going to stay this length or get a little bit longer as we go along. The entire story itself is 24 chapters, but the word count is, let me bring it up, <laughs> 232,950. It's a big one. <laughs> and this is only chapter 11, so we're not even halfway there yet. So I do believe that these um, chapters will either remain this long or get a little bit longer. But no more are we into the half hour chapters. So um, I hope this won't be a thing, but it may take me a little bit longer to get episodes out every week. So cross my fingers, that's not the case, but it takes me about double the time to read it as it does for you to listen to. So if you're listening to, say, chapter 10, which was an hour and three minutes, I believe, it took me about two hours and 15 minutes to read. Uh, to be fair, there's a lot of breaks in there. <laughs> but yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed and let me finish signing off instead of chattering at you. This has been chapter 11 of November's Secret. Written by Lana Berry. Narrated by Serd. Theme music, Spirited Away, by Gyom. I hope you've enjoyed, and please tune in again next time for Chapter 12. Until then, happy listening! <laughs>